This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello again to another edition of Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is Judith Bryles. And I'm your host, of course, and known as the Book Shepherd. And with all the things that are going on today, it was the official opening early this morning of the seventh annual Author You Extravaganza. And boy, what a morning we've had. In just an hour, we will be jumping into a amazing session with John Kramer, really the book marketing guru. He will be revealing the key components of his massive, I always call it a tome, massive tome of A Thousand and One Ways to to Market Your Books, um, of which all our attendees are getting a free copy. How cool is that? And that we will be going through that and then tomorrow and the next day, an amazing array of speakers and their expertise. So uh, if you couldn't make it this year, please, please check back to the authoru.org website. Under events, we will have the new date set up for next year and just plan on being here. That is if you want to be seriously successful. With that said, one of the things that I did on the opening this morning Uh, was a session on my brand new book, How to Avoid 101 Book Publishing Blunders, Bloopers, and Boo-Boos. And I want to do a revisit here because the response was fabulous. Um, Even though I will tell you I'm a a kind of a walking wounded right uh, right now. I was had an accident last week and shattered my right shoulder. And for someone who is fully right-handed, it's a little bit of a problem. Uh, But I believe that you continue with your commitments and you go on unless there is death or dismemberment. And although I'm quasi dismembered, um, I my mouth was in full gear and the response was fabulous, but also um, painful because of so many of the things that I went through that were to me at this point in my publishing career, you got to know this stuff. The reality is most of us don't, and we stumble through it. So I'm just going to say, whether you're a newbie author just beginning the publishing journey or one that has been on the path with one or many books, there isn't one who doesn't have a list that starts with next time, or if I had to do it over again, this is what I would do. So it's essentially an author and publishing bucket list of things to do right versus the blunders and boo-boos that we seem to gurgle up along the way. Every one of us will make them, and even those of us who have been published many, many times. Those blunders, bloopers, and boo-boos, those mistakes can cost you time, energy, and boo buckets of money. Sometimes just many amounts. Other times, they can be vast quantities of that time and energy, and yeah, mega thousands of dollars in mistakes. And those mistakes can range widely. They can be about working with the wrong people, about getting on the wrong path, about not planning, about not being realistic, sometimes even lowballing what you uh, and and what your real potential is. And that's kind of, gee, a, a, a gazongo hurt here. Mistakes can easily suck you into publishly predator land. And this is what we see all the time, by the way. And they can launch you into a full misdirection, one that you hadn't planned on, and it can actually collapse you and your book. 
newbie authors can easily become overwhelmed. I mean, let me let me tell you, it's part of the game. It is an overwhelming thing. I have said so many times that authoring and publishing should be viewed as a multiple, multiple series of marathons. Never view it as just, ah, it's a simple little sprint. It's not. It's not. We old timers can as well. And, and truth be told, sometimes we just get tired. I know I do. Tired with all the new stuff that keeps coming down the path. Sometimes it feels like it just gets in our way. And all the new must-haves and must-dos to thrive in publishing. You see them in the blogs. You see them in your email chains. You see them in your Twitter feeds. Must, 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 must. Let's face it. Sometimes we just jump into something that sounds so good that we don't want to miss the boat. And alas, (laughs) we wish we had. So the author you extravaganza that popped up began today um, is, is really, it's guaranteed to offer a variety of war stories, that just the schmoozing. And I think you need to all to understand this, that, yeah, you can do so much online, but the unbelievable power that comes into play, the unbelievable power that can come into play by just connecting with others who are going down the same path is huge. And the ability, it's like all the speakers that I bring in, and I've got 25 national pros here during the three days, all the speakers I bring in have to guarantee that they are not swoopers. What's a swooper? Those are those individuals who just come in, do their talk, and split. Nope, they have to hang out, and they got to be available to you so that you can pick their brain. I mean, how cool is that? So... With the official birthing of my book, the hundred uh, How to Avoid 101 uh, Book Publishing Blunders, Bloopers, and Boo Boos this week, that I was really able to identify a variety of critical elements to publishing success that are typically ignored, um, unknown, or sometimes ugh, just forgotten. So from author platform building and publishing business essentials to the key elements in a publishing contract to just marketing smarts, I'm going to go through a few during our hour together, just as a refresher, as an aha, as, geez, nobody told me this. So it always starts with, and I hope that you have this ingrained, but my very first one is you've got to treat authorship and publishing as a business. So you start with a question. Are you in this for something to do? Or are you serious about being a success? Be really clear on what it takes to break even. Just how many books do you have to sell to cover your initial successes, expenses leading to your success? I should say it that way. Do you have a plan? And do you have it in writing? Success in authoring rarely happens overnight. That's the marathon, the multi-marathons I refer to. It takes time and a lot of patience along with the plan. You've got to keep in mind it's your choice and you're going to choose what you do. So one of my key tips here is that to understand, fully understand, that publishing has a cost to it. Even if you're an ace at DIY doing it yourself, there is a cost. And that's your time and energy. And you still are going to have some other costs related to those things. You're going to have areas where you're going to have to look at... um, You're going to have to look at a variety of things that will involve... Uh, uh, being on a a tap. You may have to come in and fund certain areas. You've got to look at all those elements as you go along. So keep in mind, there is a cost. There's time and energy, but there's also money. Money of buying, for example, your ISBNs. It could be paying for your editor, and please do that. It could be involved your cover design. It could be involved with your interior design. You may have to have cartoons or illustrations or some kind of artwork done. None of those are freebies. Get a budget together. Start getting bids. I always believe in doing multiple bids. And and let me just share with you. I, I made 
I've made some boo-boos here where I have bid it out for things. Sometimes I I went for the, the lowest person on the totem pole because I was trying to save money, and that turned out costing me more money. Have you ever done that? How about this? Have you, You've engaged a friend to do something because they're really good, maybe doing illustrations, and it turns out they don't get you. They don't get your theme. They don't get your concept. They don't get your book. You're going to kiss off monies. So one of the things that's important to understand is that there are there are elements where you're going to have to say, this isn't working, and you pull the plug. One of the ways to do this is you start getting educated. So I want you to become a sponge. You start absorbing. You start listening. You start understanding the jargon of publishing. We've done a whole radio show on a variety of jargons that become essentials and must-haves. If you haven't gone to my personal website, thebookshepherd.com, and downloaded my publishing essential must-haves, which literally there's eight critical ones for the front matter, for example. Where do you get the ISBNs? What's the step-by-step? What about the LCC and the Library of Congress number? What's the step-by-step? Should I get a catalog in publication number? Step-by-step on how to do that. What about acknowledgments? How do I thank the people in my tribe? Well, here's a, here's some samples you can do. What, what, what needs to go on the copyright page? There's a full copyright page, examples of placements and how-tos. What about disclaimers? What if I need to cover my tush a little bit? Here's a sample disclaimer. So go to that and just download it. It's a freebie. There's a 24-page PDF that you can take advantage of. So education. Now, what about becoming a top influencer? One of the things that's really critical for you is to hang out with authors who are doing it and, and also doing it, being successful in publishing, but doing it in your genre field, your area of expertise. Are you following them? Are you contributing to their blog? Are you giving input? Are you known in that? Are you going to be able to reach out and say, hey, I need some help? Um, and, and could they be a mentor? I mean, is there areas that you can look at their website, which you should be studying, and mimicking and taking advantage of them. Do you know what your key words are and all the critical elements that you should be using in your phraseology to hook and grab potential followers in building your own tribe? Those are all critical in treating author as uh, authoring and publishing as a business. In other words, I want you to get seasoned and get involved with that. All right, we're going to be back here in in just a couple of minutes after listening to and supporting our fabulous sponsors. And this is Author You, your guide to book publishing. I'm Judith Bryles, and we are basically at the seventh annual Author You Extravaganza. Make sure you come next year. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another, Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful
Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. One of the critical tips, since I'm talking about the Author You Extravaganza, is to understand what these different publishing and writing conferences are out there. Writing conferences are usually filtered with a lot of people who don't have their full vision in place. In fact, sometimes they just are writing. Um, Some do want to publish, and they're often peppered with literary agents who will give you a few minutes, and I'm talking few minutes of their time. You can buy, you buy slots for that. And it's one of the things that if you go to a writing conference, is that you must know how to pitch yourself. And we actually did a whole show on the steps to creating the essential pitch. But you need to learn, you know, it used to be called the elevator pitch, that, and and you could maybe do it for a minute or two minutes, well, that's a giant yawn. You've got to get yourself down to maximum 30 seconds, better yet, 10 to 15 minutes seconds very quickly now let me give you a sample pitch for me let's say I was being introduced I would say something like this hello I'm Judith Bryles I'm known as the book shepherd and I show authors how to create books they never regret right that's less than 10 seconds or it could be something like this hello I'm Judith Bryles I'm known as the book shepherd and I give authors Practical publishing advice and guidance, period. Again, 10 seconds. What you want to do is just to be able to throw out your name, or you could even start with, I'm known as the book shepherd. I show authors how to create books they never regret with practical publishing advice and guidance. I'm Judith Bryles. You could put your name at the very end of it. But what you want to do is Throw out what your area of expertise is, especially for nonfiction authors. And if it's for 
fiction authors, you can throw in, I create thrillers that blah, 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 or romance, blah, 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 or whatever it is about. But what you have to learn is cut, 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 edit, 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 reduce, reduce, reduce. What you want to leave the person you're talking with, with kind of a mini type of a cliffhanger that they evoke the, the three words, I, they're the magic words, tell me more. So if you're talking, like for me, I work with fic- authors, I don't care if they're fiction or nonfiction, um, that want to really create great books. And that, and I, they don't want to have a lot of hiccups. They want to have problems, and they want to have ones that they don't have to be embarrassed about. Which there are a lot of books out there that a lot of authors are embarrassed about when they finally realize what they have done. And that if that if I'm talking to someone who wants maybe to step up step at the game, or wants to learn about publishing, that my introduction will give them a tell me more. I work with authors, and I give them practical publishing advice and guidance. I create books they don't regret. All right. So if that's something that might sound right for you, you might, we might then engage in a deeper conversation, or then you go into a few minutes. The mistake that most people make in pitching is they vomit up so much information that it becomes the turnoff. So learn how to pitch. If you're going to a writer's conference, you must learn that to hook the agent to say, tell me more about your book. All right. Now, those are those are writing conferences. There's also what what comes under author and and publishing conferences. They're really pitch fests. What's a pitch fest? Well, first of all, I want you to be familiar with the term. They will not call themselves a pitch fest. They will say they're an author or publishing conference. A pitch fest is really directed towards a lot of newbies and and actually naive in a lot of ways. And they pertain to give you education. They have workshop after workshop after workshop after workshop. And they are peppered by the expert giving the workshop with a pitch to buy XYZ for 97, 297, 597, 10,097, whatever, there's usually a 97 in it. And you need to understand that um, the monies that are generated, number one, the speakers are there for free. The deal is it's a cub and that the Monies that are generated typically are split 50-50 between the speaker and the promoter or the host of the event. Those are what pitch fests are, and they are big, big business. Typically, the person running the person gets half the money, as I said, um, and it's it's a great deal for them. So they get the venue. They get the free space for the conference room because they're going to get all these bodies there. And because they promised 100 people or 200 people, they get all the ballroom space that they need. Um, plus, they'll get them some free rooms, too. And th- that's that's how it works. And then rarely do they serve you any food. They might have water. They might have water. Everything else meals are on your own. So here's what I'm going to suggest to you. When you go to these events, number one. Never do anything by check. Never. Never do anything by debit card. You only use a solid credit card. Because here's what happens. It's a hype. There is just humongous hype. It doesn't mean that the people who are doing the presentations aren't giving you some content because they should be. But it's it's a lure. It's like going fishing. I've used this analogy before. It's like throwing out the fishing line, giving you oop, nibble content, mm, nibble content, a mm, little bit more nibble content, and <laughs> hook. Here's the offer. Here's the deal for X amount of dollars. All right. The hype starts. The hype is there. And when the hype of the moment cools down and you're back home or you realize Maybe you got roped in that whatever you did is the wrong fit or just not the right time for you or maybe way over anything that you can afford and out of your budget. 
you need to do this. Contact whoever it is. And often there is a, a three-day rescission time. Contact them. And that it let them know that it's not going to work for you and request your money back. If there is any resistance, you need to go to your credit card company. And I know uh, companies like American Express, Bank of America, um, Citibank are really fast in dealing with a customer. And what you can say is that you were there at this event. What you were told this product was was misrepresented and it's a wrong fit and you have requested uh, your money back within the three-day rescission time and the person will not give it to you. Okay, they will do a freeze. They will back out the charge. They will go and investigate it and then you need to, to noodle yourself and write down what all the details are so you can come back and make sure that you fight for what you've done. Uh, you know, I've sat through some of these pitch fest. I think it's smart to go in knowing that you're going to be pitched a variety of things. Go in with a budget for yourself. I've seen some shell out mega thousands of dollars. I, I mean, remember someone coming to me um, and I was at one with almost this deer glazed look in their eyes. And I just said, this $5,000, it was $5,000 that you committed to is absolutely the wrong fit for you. You don't even have a book. What in the world are you doing this full blown meeting with producers who are buying on books in hand to put bookings on their show? What are you doing paying to go to this event that brings these producers here to do it? You're not ready. You need to get your book. So, Understand that some of these pitch fits will make you feel like the turkey done popper has popped up and you get fanny-itis at the same time. So it's a hype. I just want you to be author beware. The author you extravaganza that I mentioned earlier, what we are really all about is an info fest. So it's not a pitch fest. Certainly, a lot of our speakers have a variety of different products that they offer. That's between them. They're not offering uh, at there, they may have a flyer on it, but it's information. Take away. This is what you can do to make your book marketing life so much better. Number three on here. This gets into contracts. All right, you're going to be signing contracts for different things. It could be for book cover. It could be for interior design. Um, it could be for a publicity campaign. It could be for a variety of things. And I think what you need to do is to understand in contracts what you are signing. And it may be very well worth an hour of a, a contract, a, a, a publishing contract attorney. Do not go to a regular business attorney. Don't don't go through these things um, that are not experts in the area that you are looking at. Publishing is a different animal. So please, please understand that. You need that kind of expertise, literary expertise, to see what you're getting into. One of the clauses, if, if you get into a contract, for example, with a publisher, that in the old, old days, and I'm, you know, an old timer here, I was publishing 30 years ago with traditional New York publishers, that if you get into a clause uh, with a contract, it was typical 30 years ago, it was typical 20 years ago, it started disappearing around 10 years ago, a reversion of rights clause. And that really went out the window when print on demand flew in. Because now a book can be sometimes, I use this phrase, held hostage in perpetuity by a publisher because they can print one book at a time if a bookstore orders it or they get a direct order from it. And, you know, you may be on to bigger and better things. You may have other fish to fry. You may want to repurpose that book and pull things from it and out of it that, below, that, that you need. So you want to make sure that you insert, if you, if you have a publishing contract with uh, any publisher, a traditional publisher, there is a stated reversion of rights clause. And it means, um, and, the, and as I said, there's kind of the T-Rex. So you want to make sure that it says that something like this. 
if less than 300 printed books are sold within a year, an annual year's time, you, I mean you the author, have the right to terminate the contract, take back all rights, including electronic or anything else you've got floating around out there with a 30-day notice. Don't, don't sway from this. You know, you will send me thank you notes. Maybe flowers. Sounds good. We'll be right back. This is Author You, your guide to book publishing. I'm Judith Biles. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Along with contracts, one of the things you need to know about, because I kissed on that as we went to our break, was termination. Make sure that any contract that you sign with anybody has a termination. Get out the door contract. I mean, you always, whenever you're in entering anything, you always want to think everything's wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be perfect. Sometimes it's not. So you need to make sure that you have an exit clause at how you terminate the contract as well, any contract, as well as the time frame. If there's monies have been exchanged, you need to deal with, uh, is there a refund? Is you do you get your deposit back? If it doesn't work, if they don't perform as you both agreed, you need to have this all done. It's kind of like a prenup, a book prenup. Think of it as a book prenuptial. And that you put it together. And I want to make sure that you don't get sucked into anything that has a phrase that it says mutually agreeable. Look it. When you want to get out of something, it ain't going to be mutually agreeable. It, 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 there's, there's going to be some toes being stepped on. And especially if there's a request for money back or, you know, the person's a jerk and that happens a lot on the other side. So you want to say that it put out the parameters of how you can terminate it and the time frame and what you will get back. All right. So that's, it's just very important. Um, and do understand that. Next, here's another common blunder I see all the time. It's very important to create some kind of a system. And and I get it that we all have different systems um, on how we keep track of stuff, how we create files and folders, whether you're uh, all hands-on or you've got the only thing on your computer or you do it in the cloud, wherever you do it. Here's what the boo-boo is that we see all the time. 
authors get files mixed up. They rewrite, they delete, they add to files that should have been archived and not touched. The wrong ones then are resent out again to editors, designers, and reviewers, and it's a mess. So my suggestion is that however you label something, uh, make sure that you always have the latest date on the file name. But when you're when you've switched out one file for the other, you need a new folder that says old or do not touch or whatever it is. So you don't go back in and redo it again. I remember working with one author and I called I called him and I said, this file has been worked on several times. You keep sending it back after and now I've got to go back in and put all the changes in way again so you can deal with those changes, not going back and rewriting and rewriting old stuff. We only rewrite on the new stuff that's been approved. So don't get caught in that. And you need to move these files on an ongoing basis. All right, the, the whole issue of ISBNs comes up all the time. And in my regular Monday morning free hour of coaching, I do at uh, 10 o'clock mountain time. And that it, it, a common, it, at least every other week, we get questions about ISBNs. And that people say, well, if, you know, if I go with CreateSpace, I can use their ISBN. It's CreateSpace. I don't care if your book name is, title is on it. It still shows CreateSpace as a publisher. I don't want to do that. And I don't want you to do that. The same thing with Ingram Spark. I, you know, and it, you want to buy your own set. And you're going to buy more than one. Now, one costs around 125 bucks. You can get 10 for 295 from the only legitimate, only legitimate uh, representative of ISBNs in the United States is Bowker, R.R. Bowker and Company. And the website you use for that, which is a simplified portal, is myidentifiers, and that's plural, myidentifiers.com. Get 10. If you are a member of authoru.org, use your code because you get a discount. Now, with that, why I say 10? Because one, you've got a print version of your book. You've got an e-version of your book. If you do an audio version, that's another. That's three books. But you can say, but Judith, wait a minute. Amazon doesn't require an ISBN for their e-book. I know that but everybody else does basically. And I think it's a mistake to exclusively, basically almost to exclusively do anything, but that it's a mistake not to have your book up on Kobo. It's a mistake not to have available through iBooks. It's a mistake not to have available through uh, the other portals that are out there that many other parts of the world access. So I would do two ISBNs minimum if you do a hardback, you need an ISBN. If you need a paperback, you do an ISBN. If you have an ebook, you have an ISBN. You do an audiobook, you have an ISBN. If you do a revision of your book, add in new material of at least 25%, you need a new ISBN. So you can gobble up these babies very quickly. And by the way, I would suggest that you make sure that you put all the versions of your book on your copyright page. So you just list them out. This is hardback or case bound, whichever phrase you use. This is print. This is ebook. This is audiobook. And even if you haven't done the audiobook yet, but you're planning on, go ahead and do it. It just identifies it, locks it in. You don't have to keep redoing your copyright page. So it's a done deal. And as a, if, if you repurpose your book, let's say you, you've written a book. Uh, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, it could be a fat fiction book and you decided, you know, I really could have made this a two-parter. You might want to go back and do a variation of it with a new intro. You might want to go back in and add teasers for another a series that's coming up to keep it going. All right. So you would have a repurpose. That means we have oh two books. So I went from one ISBN. Now I need two more. 
because I broke the book in half and did some little modifications. For the nonfiction author, it's very common to think about doing repurposing and doing variations. Um, I had one author who came in with one book and left with 15 because they were just natural. He had a huge book, um, and it was on, on health and nutrition. And there was just natural. There was four very natural segments where they we saw that they could all stand alone. And we called those the mini books. All right, now we have the, the mothership book, we called it, one ISBN. And then we did a variation. We did new back cover. We did a new introduction. We put on our uh, copyright pages that, that this had appeared in the other book already as a CYA. And we we did those, but for now we have four more ISBNs. And then we took another look at it, and I said to the author, I said, you know, some of these things really could stand alone all by themselves. So then we had the micro version. So we had another nine that came up. So it was an amazing thing that happened in those variations. And let's let's just look at this. What I'm saying: How many times have you bought a nonfiction book? Because there was one chapter or two chapters in it, which were the hook for you. I want this information. And you bought the whole book for that. Think about your buyer. Are there nuggets in here that you've created that they would be good standalone products? Another ebook variation and maybe a mini print. Do it. I would probably do that on a print on demand type thing. So idea for you but you're um, now you're now we're really talking this is a business and you see how this can go now the next thing you since since i'm talking about isbns make sure that you go back to myidentifiers.com and you identify because if you buy a block of 10 uh that they just give you the numbers you know 978 dash blah 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 and it's a 13-digit number. You want to go back into the portal at My Identifiers and now put what the title of the book is and more of a description. Why would you do that? Well, one of the things that I'm a strong proponent of is that even if you're doing an offset printing run, that I like you to consider getting onto IngramSpark.com and get it up there in a print-on-demand format for this reason. You may not be pushing into bookstores at all, but getting into Ingram Spark puts it into the Ingram catalog. Bookstores love Ingram, and they will go to them. If, if a customer comes in, someone says, is there a book on this? And they look up and it says, well, here's a title. They will have a little description, information about it, and they can order the book through Ingram on a print-on-demand basis, and you have it there. So... You want to get your book titled and whatever descriptors they ask for with Bowker when you go back through their, your Buy Identifiers uh, portal and do that. And also, here's what's cool about this when you, you expand your information. It opens up free listings in books in print. That's how Ingram would find you. Also, if any bookstore, any bookstore can find you there. And if you have an audio, they have Bowker's complete video directory. There's work, words on tape. All of that, you can be registered into that as well. So this is called marketing, and it pushes it out for where you're at. So, And I think that's kind of cool as, you, as we put it together, and we can make it really work um, for you. So make sure you do that. Now, before we, we come up to the next break, I'm mean, going to be a split here um, for our final section. But you need to take a good look at your marketing. I mean, your cover is critical. We've said this a zillion times. You get three to five seconds to get their attention, to turn it over. But this is where you really want to have it done, um, done right. And then, though, the really critical thing that I want to spend some time on is literally, here's your question. Does your back cover or what you're thinking about your back cover have the blues? And so, and when I say that is, is it boring? I mean, really boring. And if it is, that's a shame on you. There is no excuse. 
And even though you hired someone to do your 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 cover copy, did you not supply the content or did you hire someone to supply the content? You have to be the sign off on it. Understand this and then we'll take our final break for the for our session here that your back cover is hugely valuable real estate. It's where the pitch, you're going to pitch here, where your pitch is to why the buyer needs your book and it needs to be pitch perfect. And with that, we'll be right back. I'm Judith Bryles. You're listening to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based eBooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So, to avoid having the blues on the back cover is that, I, I, first let's start with the headline. Do you have one? I don't care if your book's fiction or nonfiction. Do you have a headline? Create one. Does it have a keyword or phrase in it that will hook them? Does it have a keyword or phrase that will uh, address pain, especially if it's a nonfiction book? Does it have a keyword or phrase that will seduce the fiction reader to bring it in? That should be in your headline. All right, short, to the point, it's designed to hook. That's all it is. Hook, 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 hook. All right, then I kind of like to follow with a, a short paragraph for nonfiction um, leading into uh, what a little bit more about what it's by. Then I like to use bullets. 
And the bullets could be statements or they could be questions. But for nonfiction, they should all be dealing with relief. Do you want? Have you blah, blah, blah? Is there dot, dot, dot? All right, all those things tie into that. For my fiction authors that you want to do some summarizing. So here's some homework I want you to do. For Sunday, the New York Times comes out with their their separate section on all the book reviews. Your homework is to study it and look at the descriptions. Number one, there are a couple of sentences. Can you summarize, this is a pitch, summarize your book? Look at how those things come out because they're designed to attract, to pull people in to support further sales in that. So you want to start with a a snappy, sassy, salty headline, a grabber that says, tell me more, or oh my God, this is me, yes, whatever it is. Then you want to have kind of a snappy description of the book and put it at at, at the top of the back cover, and it's your lead after the headline. Readers who are shopping for books follow an age-old browsing routine. They check out the title. Then they flip the book over and look at the top of the back cover for a description of what's inside. Self-publishers um, seem bent. I mean, I'm, and this is, <laughs> this is frustrating for me because it's frustrating for the buyer. But somehow self-publishers seem bent on frustrating potential buyers. They often leave the description of the book off altogether. They write it in a more of a convoluted prose or they bury it somewhere beneath the back cover instead of right up there at top. What is this book really about? So you want to stop it. Your, your copy needs to pull the reader in. If it's nonfiction, concise, short sentences on key points within. How the book will ease their pain or provide a solution. For fiction, study how book reviewers literally rope in a reader with just one sentence. That's what I was telling you to get the New York Times book review section. It's really excellent as a guide. Then a paragraph or two that again has got some snap to it, some let me sass to it, a little salt to it. You know what? Welcome to Marketing 101. So one of the things that you want to do in practice, literally now, is to write a crisp, enticing summary of your book and don't make readers break a sweat hunting for it. You want to use bullet points. You want to make sure the cover designer uses design and graphic techniques that will highlight keywords, phrases, or maybe even an endorsement. Maybe maybe if you're going to use an endorsement, create it a call out. And one of the things I want to caution you about on back cover design, that if you have a dark cover, Uh, The natural thing to do is to do reverse printing so that your font uh, and and your words will all be, for example, white on a dark blue or a dark purple or a dark black. You know, that's okay for a couple of lines, but after a while, it's eyeball fatigue time. So what your designer should do is if you've got a dark cover on the back cover, maybe an inset of a much lighter, more eyeball of pleasing so you can get back more to a darker black type font to use in writing your text. But there's a lot of fun things that can be done for graphic design. So one of the things I want you all to do is if you haven't done it, I've mentioned this before, is you go to a bookstore and your job is to study how different uh, covers are designed and look at the different elements. Take pictures with your smartphone um, and then bring it back and see what things works for you. And remember, there's sometimes some of the genres have more specifics um, on what's appropriate for them uh, versus a romance novel would be very different from maybe a thriller novel. Um, Could be very different from a a psychology how-to book. All right. So understand that. All right. My, my other common blunder is this is so typical when we ask authors, who is your book for? And they will say, oh, it's for everyone. Everyone needs my book. No, they don't. And no, they won't. So you need to get over thinking about it's, it's, it's truly one of the most common mistakes. So here's the things that you need to think about. 
Um, it, it, who, who's your book for? Is it for men, women, kids? What age? Are they singles, marrieds, partners? Who knows? Are they addicts? What kind of addict are they? Are they workers or worker bees or want to be worker bees? Are they, are they, you know, sluffers? Are they retirees? Are they travelers? Are they cooks? Do they have diseases? Are they educated, non-educated? Do they, you know, do they love horror or do they hate it? Um, who are they? There's a long list to create. The more you define that, I'm telling you, it's easier to market your book. So my keeper here for you really is to understand the more you niche yourself, the bigot your market will become. When you know who your market reader is, your writing will become so much easier. Your marketing will become so much easier. And your tribe building, your super fans, your followers will become explosive. But understand There's a formula to it. Now, here's a tip that a lot of people never know about. They never even think about it. When your book is all done, most likely your designer sends you the PDF of it. Good, you know, and you read it through one more time before it gets uploaded into printing, however you're going to print it. Here's what I want you to do. Because you've gone through edits and re-edits, new proofreading, there's always tweaks, After a book has been laid out, always guaranteed, there's always tweaks. And usually when a book starts out uh, and and is sent to a designer, I've had some books that have massive changes because all of a sudden authors are reading it differently. Make sure you ask your designer, and it'll probably be a little cost factor. I don't care. It could be 100 bucks. It's worth every nickel here. Ask them what the cost would be to now give you a Word document converting the entire PDF into a Word, your regular Word document that you can work with. Why do you want to do that? Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, repurpose, rewrite, changes down the road. And you have it all a very clean, crisp, fully edited file in a Word documentation that let's say you're writing an article or a blog, you just go in, pull it right out, and you don't have to play around with any of the Word mechanisms that can give you a hiccup with that. So make sure my tip here in a blunder that few people even even think about doing is make sure you ask for a PDF, uh, ask for the Word document of the final, 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 final PDF. And then, Here's one, and we see it all the time. People don't ask for reviews of their books. So there's a couple ways to do this, blankly asking. But have you, when you're doing your final exit of your book, or maybe you have from the author note up front, ask your readers to post a review on Amazon, and it counts. It's important to do this. You want to create some kind of a funnel or an opt-in on your website that will start capturing names and emails. So I mentioned that I had a giveaway on, I have several giveaways, but the one on my homepage is the eight essential publishing must haves. Okay. It's designed to get emails and names and add you to my priority email list when I have something special coming out. Every event you go to, you gather names. You can ask for cards. Certainly they're on there. But why not? Why don't you make a, just a sign-up sheet, get it on colored paper, have a clipboard you carry around with you all the time, put the, put the cover of your book on it so they recognize it, and just put on it that you'll, they'll be added to your blog list or your priority email list. And just make it a habit to start gather, 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 and gather so you can keep out and start building your tribe. If you give away books, this is a must need. You have to go back to them and ask them to go up and post reviews. If you have a book signing, like I am going to be, I, I was at, I'm not, I, next week I have a, one of my authors' is a book signing last night. One of my authors had a book signing with over 200 people there. And I made sure that he had a list to gather up everybody's name that he could then, and he sold over 200 books, that they could go out with a link to Amazon. He's going to do it. He's going to send an email just thanking everyone for being there. 
uh, today, and that he's going to, within a week, he will send an email out with a link to Amazon to post a review on his page. This is critical stuff you need to do. And so you need to ask. So my tip, gather names and emails everywhere, everywhere, everywhere you are. When you give a book away, do a follow-up with a link to your Amazon page and ask them to post a review. And you've got to keep asking. And and then here's the other thing is, anytime you need to go start going back on a daily basis, anytime a review gets posted, you will go up and make sure you check Amazon and copy, paste it into your computer so you have a copy of it. Because the Amazon Cyber Gremlins Roblots go about and they seem to delete them every once in a while. And you may have to go back and ask again. The more reviews you get, the more presence and power your book will have on Amazon for future buyers who are searching for your topic and someone like you with your expertise. How cool is that? But you've got to do the work. That's part of your marketing. This is Judith Bryles. I'm the book, your book shepherd. And we're at the Author You Extravaganza. Make sure you come next September. Don't miss out. The dates will be posted within a short period of time on the authoryou.org website. And here's a bonus. All the videos from every session are available for you to purchase in another week. Have a great week. Happy writing. And here's to your publishing. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by AuthorU and The Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, 